Welcome to the How to Set Up Mobile Agents in Package CCE presentation. This presentation will introduce you to the configuration steps that will be necessary to implement mobile agents in a package CCE environment. Let's start by looking at the call flow for a call that is serviced by a remote agent. When the agent starts their shift, they will log into package CCE and a call will be placed to their phone. This call will stay connected all day. This is referred to as a nailed up call. The call is terminated to a CTI port on the Communications Manager. The CTI port is called the Remote CTI port, commonly referred to as the RCP. Each Remote CTI port on the Communications Manager has a Partner Local CTI port. These are commonly referred to as LCPs. When an outside call reaches the Package CCE system, the call is routed to the CVP server and then queued to a skilled group. The call is then routed to the LCP, which is partnered with the RCP, assigned to the mobile agent. This action causes the outside caller to be connected to the mobile agent. The mobile agent will hear an alert tone before the call is connected so that they know the call is coming in. Before utilizing mobile agents, some additional configuration is required. This includes creating CTI ports, configuring the communication manager call duration timer, configuring agent desk settings, configuring the CTI OS, and configuring media termination points. We will start by logging into the Communications Manager and creating the CTI ports. Once logged into the Communications Manager, select Device. Since the CTI port is considered a phone, select Phone. Now click Add New. Click the Phone Type drop-down menu and select CTI Port. Now click Next. In the Device field name, enter a name that starts with LCP and is followed by a descriptive text such as the last four digits of the CTI port's directory number. In the description field, enter text that identifies the local CTI port pair. From the Device Pool drop-down list, choose the appropriate device pool. Next, scroll down to the Device Security Profile and select the appropriate security profile. You are now ready to save the CTI port. Click the Save button. After you click Save, a message appears telling you that you must click the Apply Config button before changes take effect. Click OK on this message. Now you'll need to add a directory number to the CTI port. Click the Add a New DN link. Enter the desired directory number in the Directory Number field. Click Save. You have now created a local CTI port. Next you'll need to create a remote CTI port. To create a remote CTI port, navigate to the Device drop-down menu. Now select Phone. Next, click Add New. Click the Phone Type drop-down menu and select CTI Port. Now click Next. Now, in the Device Name field, enter a name that starts with RCP and is followed by a descriptive text, such as the last four digits of the CTI Port's directory number. In the Description field, enter text that represents the remote CTI Port. From the Device Pool drop-down list, choose the appropriate device pool. Next, scroll down to the Device Security Profile and select the appropriate security profile. You are now ready to save the CTI port. Click the Save button. After you click Save, a message appears telling you that you must click the Apply Config button before changes take effect. Click OK on this message. Now you'll need to assign a DN to the CTI port. This is done in the same manner in which you did for the LCP. Click the Add New DN link and enter the appropriate directory number. Make sure to save this before moving on. Once you create the CTI ports, you will need to associate them with the PG user. From within Communication Manager's Administration web page, navigate to User Management. Now select Application User. From the list of application users that appear, select your PG user. In this example, the name of our PG user is simply PG user. This is just an example. From the list of available devices, select the local CTI ports and the remote CTI ports that you have just created. Once all the ports are selected, click the down arrow to move them into the Controlled Devices field. Once all of the LCPs and RCPs are in the Controlled Devices field, click Save. If there are mobile agents that will be logged in longer than 12 hours, you must extend the maximum call duration timer. This is done from within Communications Manager Administration. Navigate to System, Service Parameters, 
and select Call Manager Service as the service type. Now change the maximum call duration timer to a value that is appropriate for your environment. During the peripheral identification step of the CTIOS installation, you must check the Enable Mobile Agent checkbox, and you must set the Mobile Agent mode to Nailed Connection. When using TDM trunks to interface with service providers, media termination points must be configured. Cisco recommends software-based MTPs in Cisco IOS gateways for mobile agents because they provide codex flexibility and better scalability compared to other MTP options. While hardware MTPs are supported, Cisco does not recommend them because of the extra cost, codec restrictions, and scalability constraints. Software MTPs running on Communications Manager are not supported. There are two options for configuring MTPs. You may configure them so that they are always used. This is done by selecting the Media Termination Point Required option in the Trunk Group configuration. You may also configure them to be dynamically inserted if CCE detects a need for them. This is done by selecting RFC 2833 for the DTMF signaling mode in the Trunk Group configuration. In order for the mobile agent to hear a connect tone when the call is connected, you must change the Windows registry for the Key Play MA Connect Tone under the JTAPI GWPG registry entries. On the PG machine, open the registry editor, locate the value shown in this slide, and change the value to 1. You also need to be aware of the codec and bandwidth requirements. For a cable connection, the minimum download speed is 1 megabit per second. The minimum upload speed is 256 kilobits per second. For an ADSL connection, it is 1.4 megabit download and 256K upload. Latency is also a concern. Round trip delay should not exceed 60 milliseconds for a cable connection or 180 milliseconds for an ADSL connection. The G711 or G729 codex may be used for ingress and egress gateways. However, only one may be used, not both. In addition, you need to ensure that the codex selected in the Unified Communications Manager matches that which is selected in the peripheral gateway setup. Also, all mobile agents must use the same codec. You will need to create a desk setting profile for the mobile agents. To do this, access the Web Administration Interface and select Manage. Next, click Desk Settings. Now click New. Enter the name for the desk settings, such as Mobile Agents. Most of the options on this page should be configured based on your operations needs. However, you do need to select the Auto Answer checkbox and the Enable Mobile Agent checkbox. Next, click the Save button. You now see that the new desk settings appear in the list. Now you will need to assign the desk settings to an agent. Select Manage. Now click Agent. Select the desired agent. Now click the magnifying glass next to the Desk Settings field. From the list that appears, select the desk setting that you just created. Now click Save. You should now see that the save was successful. This concludes the How to Set Up Mobile Agents in Packaged CCE presentation. This presentation has provided you with an overview of the most common tasks required to implement Mobile Agent. You are encouraged to review the Package CCE Features and Options documentation before you deploy mobile agents in your environment.